No, all right. Test, test, one, two, three. <clears throat> All right. So uh, JT was just talking about the um, potential collapse of the electrical grid in Texas. <laughs> Again. And, and uh, I asked him if there's going to be some sort of like seasonal migration uh, now as if, as if Texans are birds. Uh, every <laughs> winter they're, they're going to go. And I, I mentioned Connecticut because I don't know where the fuck Connecticut is. Uh, but apparently it's a cold state. <laughs> yes. yes <laughs> so that's cold. the one you want to go. And, and JT mentioned it would be Florida instead. And for some reason, in my mind, I was like, hold on. Wait, Texas doesn't short a, doesn't share a border with Florida, does it? And I went to fucking Google it because <laughs> I, I couldn't give a see, shit less about I'd love to yeah. see you draw a map of the United States and, like, where you think the state borders are. I, I would I, – I, that'd be fascinating. Look, I can't – I think it's just I would just keep drawing squares. I think, and eventually, <laughs> yeah. I I know what Texas looks like, right? It uh-huh. uh, looks like a ba- like a bad snaggletooth, but everything else is just yeah. squares, uh, more or <laughs> until less. Until you yeah. get to California, you would guess <laughs> like seventy percent. Like, but you know where New York is, you know where California is, and then Texas, yeah. and no non-American knows about any of the other ones. Very true. Very true. Well, I was gonna say because I, I brought up the map and I said, look, I'm looking at Texas and Florida, and there's these few states in between. Uh, La what Miss are these? El- L and Ga. <laughs> I'm like, okay, wait. L A is Louisiana. Yeah. M S is Mississippi. Yeah. A L is you Al Gore. <laughs> you know, Arkansas. I don't fucking know. Alabama. Is it Alabama. Arkansas? Alabama. Oh, wait, Arkansas. Is that a? St- that's a city, isn't it? No. Isn't Arkansas that A R? Isn't that A R? Yeah, okay. Fifteen, uh-huh. baby. Yeah. Wait, hold on. G A. What you got fucking it. state you starts with a G? It's a, it's also the Georgia. name of the country. Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Yes, yes the sweet, <laughs> yes, the sweet old country of Georgia. Man, <laughs> where, where, where Uncle Joe's from. All right, there we go. See, I, I appreciate the support. Just I mean, one has like yeah. great wine and very hairy men. The other one has yeah. incest. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never understood why. Why do you have two Carolinas? Well, one wasn't enough. Clearly, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever dated what a Carolina? Dakota? You'll understand why you need two. Yeah. <laughs> mm, oh my lord. Oh lord. Uh, and of course now. Nashville, Tennessee, the Nashville, Tennessee skyline, mm. um, which apparently is a nightmare city. I've never been. I've never been to the U.S. at all, which I, I consider a blessing for myself. Honestly, <laughs> alhamdulillah. I'm gonna but, take you to the worst places <laughs> when you visit. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, I want you to take me to Salt Lake City. That seems like <laughs> no. You know, <laughs> take me to Provo. <laughs> you got it, sport. Oh my god. No, for, Spanish Fork. Fuck you. It's a place called Spanish Fork. <laughs> My favorite okay, no, thing is, is Hakeem being fascinated with the United States names. <laughs> okay. Hold on. I'm just going to zoom into Iowa, which, by the way, there's nothing in there. Jesus Christ. Waterloo. All right. Mason City. De- oh, de- there's Des Moines or Des Moines or whatever the, fuck, Moines. Was. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck it was called. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Papillion. Like, like a what? Like a papilloma? All right. Nice. And Lincoln. Oh, is, is Lincoln where the car manufacturer comes from? I, I doubt it. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I, d- I doubt it. It's it's named I'm sure named after President Lincoln. So I'm I, oh. there are probably two dozen Lincolns in the country at least. You know what? Um, when the revolution happens, I'm gonna go settle me settle down myself in Casper, Wyoming. Okay, <laughs> just to enjoy the the, the, <laughs> the the sweet air and the. Is there even a city here? Uh, they have the Casper Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. So that's a. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Okay, enough, enough, enough. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this forever. Uh, why is everything a 50-minute drive away? It's just blocks. What the fuck? That's right, sorry. the United Anyways. States. Mm. That's, uh, that's us. Mm. Yeah, and there's, of course, a golf course. There's nothing else. It doesn't even look to be a university or a school or something in the, <laughs> in the city, but uh, they have an Albertsons <laughs> and a Bratis meat market. <laughs> okay, Kathy, little Mexico is here. <laughs> You're still going. It's like, okay, I'm going to stop. Oh, a new thing. <laughs> okay, okay. No, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'm going to exit out of the fucking tab. There we go. There we go. Anyways, boys. Hakeem is the like, pointing what? Wojak. <laughs> yeah, basically. Apparently <laughs> now, apparently now the Ohio is like the new Florida. I don't know if you've seen, but like Gen Zers are turning mm. Ohio into uh, like Florida on steroids, but not like from the perspective that people are as insane as in Florida, mm. but more like everything in Florida just work. Uh, sorry, everything in Ohio just works completely different than uh, than anywhere else, and it's like mm. just random videos. Like I don't know, I'm looking mm-hmm. at this massive massive bodybuilder cat walking and then they're like <laughs> only in ohio or there's like a, there's there's a toilet door and it says uh, hands-free toilet door but it's not opening for the guy so he opens it with his hands and it says only in ohio mm. uh like different um 
roller coaster rides that just keep breaking and people are flying <laughs> off of them and they're still going back on the roller coaster they're like the next <laughs> people that buy and it's like only in ohio so yeah florida look out you uh you have some competition over gonna there be dethroned mm. if they only had alligators that would be it for florida It'd be gg have you actually have you ever seen an alligator yeah of course like you know yeah. really Arigato. are they because uh, I've noticed, uh, like I, I, I've seen um, videos on YouTube that there are like alligator parks or something, uh-huh. and kids go there and, and whatnot. <laughs> and is that is that genuinely a thing, or is that just a weird? Florida? You can go to places like uh, in Louisiana. You can go on like a, a what do they call it? A fan boat tour where you get on this boat with a big fan on the back and it blows you around and you mm. see alligators. Oh, there's a Teal Five one. Yeah, yeah, that. I know what that's you mean. fucking fire. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, I mean, they're all over the place <laughs> in some places. They're, you'll you will lose a dog if they walk too close to the water. Yeah, it's, they're like cats. Oh, Islands right. of cats. You, those guys have crocodiles or and alligators. Ancient, yeah. like, uh, completely ancient dinosaurs. <laughs> predators that, un, like, that have not changed in their evolution uh, for millions mm. of years. <laughs> yeah, the perfect <laughs> killing machine. Yeah, I love it. I would be so down to go to one of those w- with you guys. I want to go to one of those. I want to go to a county fair and see the, the toothless people, <laughs> oh. right? I just want to. I want to get. Probably wouldn't real let America you in now. a county fair. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's too colored. Yeah. He's trying to blow up it's our like, Ferris wheel. <laughs> oh, hey, Is he one know, of the attractions? I'm dreaming of a white <laughs> replacement. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? It's I was a... not expecting that. <laughs> hey, old Merry brother. Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to all our uh, patrons. This is coming out for you on the 23rd. Everybody else gets to eat the slop a little bit after Christmas. So uh, hope you all had a wonderful, uh, wonderful Christmas if you celebrate. If not, hope you had a wonderful 25th of December. I don't know what you people do on <laughs> the 25th of December. Um, and, a, and a lovely new year if it is uh indeed after the new year i don't know uh today we're going to be talking about um holidays some positive stuff some uh it's some things positive. that you have <laughs> it is positive it's stuff that yeah, uh you have thanks to <laughs> socialists and well i mean there's mm. there's some you know brutality along the way as often happens uh when we try to get more rights more more benefits things like that but we wanted to talk about some vacations that we have thanks to socialist and uh, labor efforts as well as some some perks we've picked up um, over the years and vacations and holidays in general as a concept as an idea yeah. as where it could go as uh, what gave birth to it uh, what even are holidays what even are vacations what even are like special moments <laughs> special days and special dates that we take in order to you know dedicate it to like a particular person or movement or whatever. See, I'm I'm, I'm spreading it. I'm giving us more space here, yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm you're giving us more episode. space. <laughs> you're like you're literally like, oh, we're gonna talk about socialist I'm like, no, man, that's gonna be ten minutes. <laughs> you got looking at the at the Google Doc like, oh shit, here we go again. I'm gonna have to pad mm-hmm. this with my rants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just a, it's a casual fireside yeah. chat, okay? Oh, but instead of with Dennis chat. Prager, it's with it's with with uh, JT. Penis Drager, uh, yes. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, gang. Ugly is. Shall, shall we? Shall Sorry. we? Shall we start? I'll I'll start with the uh, the obvious one here. Labor uh, Day. Wh- no, but uh, I, I had a question before that. Since yeah, we, go ahead. Let's talk about the the Christmas holidays, I guess, a bit, and not just oh, the yeah. Christmas. The the other two that people don't care, like the Jew thing, and <laughs> you Muslim guys, you don't have one in these dates. It's like in the no, in the other no. dates. I'm I'm joking, obviously. <laughs> Hanukkah. When was Hanukkah? When did the when did the little funny hat people Isn't dance the, around? Oh my God. Isn't the last eight days of, of December? Yeah, it's a fairly like minor holiday but just because it's close to christmas has been kind of blown out of i guess uh, at I least guess. that's my mind i, I, I no, do not know I, it is I, it, a failure funny enough I, I go in here with this like off the cuff like uh, semi-anti-semitic shit and i actually know it i've been yeah. mm-hmm. a few times yeah it's around seven eight days before the new year and you know they gather share uh, stories blah 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 uh, all lovely also christmas celebrations lovely orthodox christian ones for the ones that are not fucking traitors <laughs> and that switch their <laughs> fucking calendar is uh, over in January 7th, I think. So it's after New Year's. And I, I loved watching one particular video of like Serbian Orthodox uh, people 
like 10th generation immigrants in the US or whatever, you know, having to like stomach through these massive Christmas celebrations on the 25th of December and then nobody doing anything for their own Christmas. So mm-hmm. in a in a very uh, Eastern Orthodox uh, Christian manner, they, they uh, wanted to let everyone know that it's their Christmas. And apparently it's a tradition in this one city where like uh, this is like like... 300 years or 200 years of this these like Serbian families that live there they basically just drive around town and shoot their guns in the air <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate said Christmas which is it. always it, it's very interesting how like different particular you know we're not going to go into the anthropology of it all but uh, even even when you have something that is that is generally celebrated for example like a religious holiday among many different cultures who uh, follow said religion you have uh, different local interpretations on how to particularly let's call it um mark this particular occasion you know there there is the the core of you know what the religion says if it's a religious holiday but then you know a lot of people play around with it depending on you know the the local culture that exists and i guess serves in the u.s shoot guns in the in the air other guys like to, to consume this type of food or that type of food as usual for that year some people have one type of tree other people have a different type of tree but all in the wider wider definition of the the religion religious event or the non-religious event i actually have a question about that uh, for both of you guys but jt i can, he he can go first since he's the uh, what's it called the the, the resident american and it's been hyper commercialized <laughs> what do you guys do you have anything special you do for christmas is there any like significant <sighs> parts to the to the holiday or is it, it just you know i mean it depends gifts on gifts under the tree yeah it depends on who you ask for most people it's just consumption it's just gifts under the tree which you know it's nice mm. to give people gifts and stuff if you do you yeah. know thoughtful stuff um but it has been super commercialized some people if they're religious will go to like a christmas service at their church mm. um which are always big productions <laughs> like i used to work at a mm. at a church uh here in texas and they pulled out all the stops like they had a dude dressed up as jesus they had a donkey that he rode in on <laughs> down the, like, the, <laughs> the aisle of the church <laughs> people with like palm fronds and stuff um, and I, you, you guys probably saw this video online where this year, I think I rec- I think it was Gateway Church in also in mm-hmm. Texas, which is a, one of those mega churches. Um, and it had like the band, uh, the, the church band suspended from the ceiling with like wires oh and stuff God. while they're playing, like mm-hmm. flying over the crowd. So it's, it, it's spectacle mostly these days. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it it varies by family. There are some people who do like traditional Christmas stuff, you know, mm. um, spend actual time with their family. They'll maybe they'll do like the twelve days of Christmas thing, which is a little bit older, and they. But most people, not so much. Oh, is is that the one with the partridge in a pear tree? <laughs> yeah, I, where you cumulatively you end up with eighty four birds by the end of the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like God damn. my true love gave to me. It's like okay, what did you give your true love then? Huh? It's like presumably oh, this, also this birds. Is, yeah, I was like this person, this they them ambiguous. Uh, you know, they're running around town getting you all this shit. What have you done? <laughs> Fucking sitting there on your ass. But what, there's no there's no turkey or anything special. Is there a dedicated bird uh, to be feasted on? Or I don't believe there's a a specific bird you're supposed to consume like my family has always done like a roast like beef Uh um but i know some people do turkey as well so i think it's kind of it's it's free for all at this point you know Mm. eat whatever you want cool is there such a thing as a Christmas taco? <laughs> okay, There's a Christmas no, ham. Sorry. You know what? It might be ham. I think ham is the is the one you're supposed to have. have. Don't quote me on that, but I uh, I think that's what it is. All right. I looked up Christmas do- taco and lots of <laughs> recipes come up, but no no pear and pomegranate tacos, Christmas tacos. They actually look they they that look pretty good, good actually. Fuck. All right. Uh, sorry. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> how about you, you go, Nick? Please let us know. Ah, well, with us, it's uh, it's still kept very traditional. I guess you come together with the I'm family, good. spend time together. You, uh, if uh, like it's a big gathering, you roast either uh, depending on what you like, either you know a pig or uh, or lamb. Uh, you know, the, the food is gathered. You all sit at the table, etc., uh, etc. Et it also marks the last day of the fast. So everybody that was fasting mm. is now fucking gorging on like uh, <laughs> uh, meat on top of meat on top of meat. But most <laughs> people just, you know, they they larp the fast by only fasting on the on the day before Christmas, where it's like super important for you not to eat meat. Uh, <clears throat> and then you know they enjoy the enjoy the next day. It's a it's a it's a chill holiday. 
usually people end up uh, celebrating it twice out of like mm. respect to people that celebrate it on the 25th especially if they live abroad and then they celebrate it uh on the on the 7th uh, as they say you know slavs always look for uh, additional reasons to have extra holidays to work less because mm. uh, nice. because yes. they have a brain <laughs> same like uh, south americans man i work with a lot of south mm, americans yeah. over at work their position in south america spaniards as well motherfuckers know how to live there's so many fucking holidays mm. filling out every single calendar that is the correct approach that is the correct mm. fucking approach. And not only that, but when they take days off or, or leave, uh, they save up more days and then they take them uh, uh, like connected, for example, three weeks mm. uh, completely mm. off. Uh, and you spend a month proper, properly relaxing and forgetting all about work. But that's in countries where you can uh, actually do this and where mm. the, your employer does not really have the right unless it's an extreme circumstance or you told them too late that uh, to like refuse uh, a particular vacation well probably the 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 north american continent that's not really a possibility for the majority of mm. of jobs or whatever but that's uh, too serious uh one thing i've never <laughs> seen i've n absolutely never seen uh and uh, I, I guess it doesn't exist because like the larpy right would be complaining about it at this point uh, like even the semi-homeless like uh um santas that you know dress up in order to make a, a quick buck uh, during the cold uh and fucked up mm. days of, of peak winter i've never seen a black santa it's always white santas <laughs> like the sjw's mm. have not reached uh, santa claus and they haven't seen an asia <laughs> santa i haven't seen anything so so is uh jt have you seen a black santa like in a mall or something or walking around um, or like a little person that's you know playing unfortunately it, stereotypically the little elves or whatever they're supposed to be <laughs> they hire little people i'm guessing have you ever they're all also white right have you seen like oh a, a black <laughs> little person running around You're like hey and then Jesus Christ. and there's like people bringing <laughs> no actually, people, people not think about it because right, no i'm imagining like a texan white american family going into the mall because their kid is like yeah i want to talk to santa Santa. And they're going oh into God. the mall yeah. and they're going to <laughs> Santa and San Santa's fucking Jerome over there. And they're like, man, uh, what's this country come to? Not even, we can't even have Santa, man. You know, that's that's the image that, uh, that I'm, uh, I'm basically, right-wingers listening, I am literally inventing a new thing to unite the right around, the black Santas. Fucking mm. uh, give me 10%. Uh, but yes, okay, please answer. So, so has <laughs> Santa been diversified or do they follow like the real lore as LARPers would say, mm -hmm. that, you know, the motherfuckers from the North Pole. You know, before you answer that, I, I decided to look it up. There's a New York Times article titled In Search of Black Santa. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> from 2021. Of course <laughs> Oh, my is. Lord. Well, that, that's hey, kind of... your home state. It kind of tracks with my experience. I haven't seen a black mall Santa. I have, however, seen, uh, like, dads come in to schools. Uh, okay. Black dads mm -hmm. dressed as Santa, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm. As for the elves, I don't believe I've actually ever seen a um, little person or person of short stature i'm not sure which is more politically correct um here in the states i don't think really? i have no i think it's normally like i don't know 20 something white women who are the elves and they're having oh, a great well. time <laughs> i just love there it you, go. you, you um, like it sexy i guess i because i've been to germany many times and in germany i've seen it like two three times so that's why it's like embedded in my head but i guess they they have a different <laughs> they don't go they they uh really stick to the lord they don't uh, sexualize it the way you americans do with everything you see how i identify the woman being an elf with it being immediately sexualized immediately yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> immediately yeah <laughs> Self whip, self whip. The, I'm sorry to say the comments on this article are are insane. It's it's like uh, 331 comments. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen 331 comments wow. on any New York Times article. Yeah. So uh, yeah. That, that <laughs> who are these people you, who uh, comment on I, New York Times articles? I, uh, yeah. I, it's I, a it's a oh. great topic to rile fucking batshit insane yeah, people yeah. around. And I, you see, I, I invented it on the spot. The dear listeners, I didn't like write this down before. I was thinking of American Christmas. I was thinking, okay, they're pissed off about all oh, Christmas we all talked about the 700 times you know Christmas being stolen and uh, you know now it's holidays it's no longer a Christian holiday but uh, they never racialized it up until now and it was a great idea let's racialize Christmas and just another way how to balkanize the United States mm. <laughs> <laughs> guys please why does Santa Claus need to be politicized identity politics should be left out of oh Christmas people have bigger things to worry about than Santa's racial characteristics says Dave from New Jersey <laughs> <laughs> says the guy worrying about Santa's racial characteristics who cares? Yeah. 
Oh my god, there's people doing race signs in the no. fucking comments. Like, like, but, but, Statistically, uh, a black person cannot be jolly enough to be Santa Claus. Not at all. Oh it's a, uh, or what was it? Uh, well, uh, um, uh, Santa's guys, most please, famous please. because of his white beard, and we all know that uh, uh, black people have curly beards, and therefore it, it cannot look, the aesthetic would not be correct. X, guys, X to doubt. A- Angus, brother of Fergus from British Columbia, says, "Well, Santa apparently, uh, well, apparently Santa needs to woke up a few notches. As cool as Black Santa looks, where is the Asian Santa? The GLBT, not LGBT. The GLBT Santa. The, Hisp- the Hispanic Santa. The physically challenged Santa. And what about fuck Mrs. Yeah. Claus or Miss Claus? Oh, Could she not yeah. be in a burka? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Could she not be in a burka? <laughs> if, if Christmas is about inclusion, this might be a solution. If it is rather about season's greetings as opposed to Merry Christmas." Christmas, oh which God. can include any season you want from a spring fling to Columbus <laughs> Day, up. then perhaps it's not... <laughs> I love it. Just, Feed me, daddy. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. And then there's people like, Santa's not real. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Out of your sleep. Oh, fuck. Oh, Look oh, up, okay, Joe okay. Biden. Let's, let's Santa's not real. 9-11. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> there's people joining in from Bermuda. It's like, my white kids grew up. It's like white in brackets, so they had to specify that they have white kids. <laughs> white kids. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. That's too much. Oh, Lord. Okay, yeah, Lord, Lord. We'll, we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, a third of the way into the, the episode here. Uh, let's let's oh, speed people, run. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So people, people are talking about drunk statistics in the comments. In the comments of the Santa thread. <laughs> yes, yeah, Santa thread. If we let the blacks be Santa, you know how many druggies are going to be. They're going to drop the crack down the chimney. The <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, but if my neighborhood is white sense. only, then Santa won't be able to get the gifts for the kids. <laughs> oh, my God. Security guy okay. won't let him in. He's <laughs> 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 oh like, I'm literally Santa. Like, nah, man, no. And then racial <laughs> profanities. Post- yeah. Guys, uh. at, at the post office today, a worker who just so happened to be African-American helped me at the window. All right? Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Susan from Staten Island. <laughs> See, I don't hate Oh, blacks. my God. She just says that she has a whole fucking essay where she just basically says that, oh, you know, he was so jolly that I got Santa vibes from some random black man. Uh, and as a result, of it, like, you know, and then she she wrote at the end, universally recognized by one and all, ho, ho, ho. And it's like weird. All caps, low, upper ca- uh, caps, lower caps, upper caps. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Well, there's your there's your Santa deep Santa lore race science for the day, <laughs> dear listener. Chime in You're if welcome. you think we can have a Micronesian Santa. I think that's that's the one yeah. that's up for debate. <laughs> or some right. other or some other typically white character that we can uh, intentionally ruin for rightoid cucks. Moving on to what was originally the the topic of this episode, but I'm kind of glad we've derailed it into into Christmas <laughs> memes. It's um, holidays. We talked about Christmas, this motherfucker. I swear to God. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> Labor Day. Let's talk about Labor Day very briefly uh, and where it came from. Originally intended to be what it says on the tin, a day to celebrate workers and their labor. Uh, today, it's kind of just seen as a like a three-day weekend uh, before kids go back to school and people will, will grill and stuff. They'll get real grill-pilled. Mm-hmm. Um, the yes. first <laughs> Labor Day was held in 1882 in New York City, orchestrated by the city's Central Labor Union. Uh, the organizers of the earliest Labor Day celebrations, they wanted a way to bring different kinds of unionized workers together to develop a critical mass of militant labor power, which, you know, great plan. But this was uh, not exactly approved by, by those in power, but it's just something that, that uh, union organizers went ahead and did. They said, we're going to do a thing. We're going to make it a holiday, basically. Uh, labor Day originally wasn't just meant to be a celebration, but a way to bring attention uh, to the fact that many workers were forced to work stupid, ridiculous hours, like the average manufacturing worker was routinely putting in uh, 60-hour weeks in those days. And shortly before, like a decade or so before, it was 70-hour weeks uh, were the norm. Um, their demands were pretty simple, a reduction in work hours and more days off during the week. And it's only thanks to these workers that we have the 40-hour work week and two-day weekends today, which we will get to when we talk about the eight-hour workday. But as far as Labor Day goes, is that something that you guys have? Do you have something similar to that? Has it? Uh, do you have a day honoring workers? Yeah, like we a, have the actual day. Yeah, like <laughs> you have made the entire a, yeah. planet, <laughs> the entire planet, yeah. and then Canada and the U.S. just do it on a different day. 
Yeah. May Day, baby. Well, Canada too. May Day. Yeah, Canada idea. too. Yeah, man. It's 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 a uh, cock by association. <laughs> yeah, I see United States as hat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my god, I, uh, hat is the, is a very polite way of putting it. I think it's more as more akin to what Yugopnik said. But mm, uh, yeah, fair enough. Sorry, Yugopnik, you were saying. No, yeah, what uh, we me and Hakim implied. So Labor Day. Uh, in the rest of the world is usually called May Day or Workers' Day or most commonly International Workers' Day. I keep keyword being international, again, mm-hmm. for everyone except like two countries, <laughs> uh, yeah. which is celebrated on the 1st of May. The, the, the reason it works really well, well is because in a lot of cultures, uh, especially that exist kind of on the center of what we imagine the Eurocentric uh, Uh, world map uh, is basically from uh, northern Europe all the way down to the south through Central Africa etc etc May Day the 1st of May has was often celebrated as a as a big holiday the coming of spring etc etc so that kind of being uh, embedded in uh, generations and generations of kind of even pre-socialist and pre-capitalist societies and then sprinkled on top with be having been chosen by I think it was the Second International as like the the uh, uh, workers uh, holiday made it like really uh, let's call it uh, embedded in uh, in people's in people's minds. Where I'm from, it's uh, very commonly celebrated, and even during uh, socialist times, they try to make a very nice combination between uh, still respecting like the traditional, you know, even pre-Christian or whatever uh, celebrations of May Day, which you know you go out and you appreciate the nature you appreciate spring you go and you camp usually next to like a nice river it can be for a few days it can just be for a few hours or whatever but then you also celebrate it as a workers day that's the particularity of kind of where i'm from i know that for example in many countries in western europe it is only the the latter you know you go out in the street and you fucking uh make your voice uh, heard for whatever uh, particular reason your union or your Uh, left-leaning uh, organization uh, stands for it's a super fucking cool holiday everybody goes red it's a it's a day where you can you can potentially depending on where you're at really even find a p- potentially an organization that you would uh, uh, feel like uh, potentially joining because if they're on the streets they they probably are doing something not just you know larping at it it's a it's a it's a day of solidarity it's a day of uh, of remembering that no matter how uh, I guess scarce it is to to find uh, uh, open out in the world communists on the street uh, the, when you go through May Day in like the city center walking next to thousands of people in certain cases it's it's a very nice uh, motive like a motivational moment yeah where you do realize that you're really genuinely not as alone as you would think uh, a moment that is much more intense than uh, no matter how many online hangouts are organized with lovely comrades but comrades tens of thousands of kilometers away from you uh, I guess that in my opinion is the the main relevancy of May Day today as it as it is because it's it's a, it's a rallying moment a rallying day a wake up call of sorts for uh for most uh, commies for you Hakim yeah uh, in a sort of, it's very similar um it's the same like general presentation people will go out and have their little no I don't want to say demonstrations but you'll have people with waving the red flag you know and it's a very what's the word to, to use like there's a lot of exposure to to leftists mm. at in that particular and also it's great timing of the year generally i mean not in our regions but all over the world it's usually very nice weather um so it's the sort of thing where people also do events so there won't even there won't just be a demonstration or a march or something yep. there'll also be like grilling and barbecuing and this kind of stuff and mm. people getting together it's very nice um there will also be extremely intricate um like minute uh sectarian <laughs> like yeah. infighting uh, that, <laughs> that gets like <laughs> that reaches a pinnacle during the the may 1st right and you'll have two individ- two groups who are basically exactly the same except for some stupid thing <laughs> from 1972 <laughs> like one resolution that they disagree on from like 50 years ago and then they're going to be marching next to each other calling each other revisionists 
yeah. beautiful. But the speakers, um, usually so. the, the leader, like they would hear one group chant a particular name that the other group doesn't like. And then, you know, the leader yeah. of the other group that dislikes the other, the, the first group mm. that chanted the name is going to use the big speaker and be like, no mm. to, for example, authoritarian figures. Mm. Oh, and, then like, yeah. and then there's going to be a bunch of motherfuckers that try to hijack, like uh, hijack it, like, oh, vegan animal rights groups or whatever. It's like, okay, <laughs> great. No, you do you, bro. But like, really today, like, what the fuck, man? Uh, you're dressed in yeah, purple or some shit. What the fuck is it? But yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the uh, Ant Prims come and then it's like, you see like all these fucking, but no, it's, it's nice. It's, it's still nice. Yeah. After a few hours, nobody really has uh, the animosity anymore because of just how nice and large the event becomes. Mm. Yeah. And after the event exactly right. ends, they all split uh, into their own like events, as Hakim said, that they, that they organize. Mm. Some motherfuckers are streaming some like old movies. Some are doing like hangouts uh, and free food. Some are- uh, Music, yeah. so much Exa music. So much music. Some are doing live band mm. performances. Everybody's yeah. trying to attach to mm. one or the other like demographic, I guess. Uh, and then at night there's like so many uh, like all nighter events that like themed something commie or whatever and that are very safe for openly socialist people, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, it's a nice day. It's a cool day. Yeah, that mm, sounds sure. nice. I wish we had stuff like that. I mean, the most we get on our Labor Day is people uh, dressed up in like American flags and stuff. It's basically a oh, mini, uh, mini 4th of July. So mm, rip yeah. us, rip commies. Rip, uh, rip labor mm. power. It's not a uh, not how it was intended uh, in the beginning. But at well, least you still have a Labor Day. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, I mean, we still that. it's still named Labor Day. They haven't changed the name or mm. anything. At least, Wait, are, are, is there like a unofficial May May Day parades or something that happened in the U.S.? We have the Macy's Day parade. Which is, um, oh, is it May first? <laughs> I don't know when it is. Don't tell me. Don't you're fucking with me. Hold I don't on. think Macy's it is. I think it's Day it's parade. towards the end of the year. I think. It is... Things are on Christmas, actually. So, what the fuck is this? Annual parade in New York. It's November 27th, I guess? November 25th? Well, I don't fucking know. It's when they bring out the big balloons. Yeah. The Snoopy... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harassing. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly right, yeah. Um, but uh, unofficial May Day celebrations, not something they, not, that you noticed. Not that I'm aware of. At least not where I am. All right. USA May Day. Let's, I'm just Let's wondering find if out. anything happens. No, it's just old timey pictures, of course. <laughs> and by the way, oh, I love it. You 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 see it, and then it's just uh, what's it called? Um, American leftists, and they say, and the the demand on the um, on the banner is demand a thirty hour uh, work week. Mm. Imagine a hundred years ago, basically. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the the the, ba the biggest irony is that the May, uh, the first of May date was like proposed and by like the American Federation of uh, Labor mm. to commemorate, you know, yeah. the the. Uh, Haymarket, Haymarket uh, uh, affair, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, which, and then, you know, the, the, the socialist from said country recommended it and yet now kind of invented the first, let's, let's, we could, we could even go as far as to say the first of May as, you know, the International Workers' Day. And now, unfortunately, that's the one place where it's not celebrated on that particular day, even though the event kind of that we all remember, uh, Haymarket affair, it happened in your country as well. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's pecu it's peculiar, but that's probably the main reason why, you know, mm. why it was moved. But uh, <laughs> no. God forbid you Americans remember their very, very, very rich uh, socialist history yeah, and anarchist alas. history in this case. Yeah, alas. All right. Well, speaking about May, let's talk about summer vacation a little bit. Uh, this is more of a European thing. We don't really uh, have this guaranteed in the States. Um, but back in the 1930s, socialists in the French government, I'm sorry, Hakim, uh, had fought to guarantee mm -hmm. workers two weeks paid vacation during the summer. Uh, in 1936, mm. a pretty sizable strike movement moved the needle enough to win French workers a summer break. So say what you will about the French, but they, they know how to mm. protest to this day. Like they're still driving bulldozers full of uh, shit to their politicians' mm. offices and stuff. So that's very <laughs> good for them. Good the for first them. socialist <laughs> state was French. We can never deny this. But, <laughs> yeah, I can't. But but, but I tried them too much. Exactly. But I tried to imagine like, uh, you know, that was just like aliens or like non-French or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, anyway, workers in other countries took note of the victory and the gains earned by the French workers started to materialize elsewhere through similar labor, labor actions, like in uh, uh, Great Britain, for example. And then a little thing called 
World War II kind of threw a wrench in things, but this was still for a while a major victory for labor. The fact that they were able to secure two whole paid weeks off in a time where that was unheard of uh, is pretty crazy. And that's unfortunately something that we don't have here in the States. Like you're never going to get, you know, guaranteed summer vacation as an adult. That's the like the number one thing that people um, like coming out of college <laughs> realize yeah. real quick is that they don't get a summer break anymore. They they are once yeah. they graduate, they are working twenty four seven basically die. until you die. <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. uh, sure. uh, props to the to the French, to the socialists in their government, and uh, in other countries, just just not the U.S. Mm. Is that? Do you guys have anything similar? What uh, as in like, like a paid summer vacation, summer? a paid summer for adults, like working people? Yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No such thing, no such thing. Kids have a lot of, of uh, summertime off, and as they should, um, but uh, nah. No, but you, On occasion... You're given, huh? you're given, for example, 20, 25, 30 days off in the year, and if you want to plan them all together and have a summer vacation and call it a summer vacation... Yeah, that's... Y- yeah. You can, yeah, but you, you're allowed to link as many days as you want, and unless it's a very extreme circumstances, your employer is not uh, legally allowed to, to tell you no. Mm, that's right. nice. I guess, I guess that's what we can call summer yeah. vacation. If that's what we call summer vacation, yes. then yeah. Mm. And I'm guessing Hakim, you as well. You can combine like two weeks, yeah. right? And just basically, yeah. 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 Mm. But those and you can have it in the summer if you want. Exactly, mm. but those like three months or whatever—that's that's an absolute myth. Usually, you know, if you have five, six years of, of work experience in most places in Europe, some a lot more, some a bit less, but you you know you will get to around 25 free days during the year that's like four full work weeks uh mm-hmm. so you usually cut them in two uh two weeks you go on on summer vacation you know either uh, usually to the seaside or whatever and another one week or two weeks you go up to the mountain and you i don't know either walk around or ski or whatever the fuck you want to do and uh that balances out you know in the winter and then in the summer because without those two larger vacations uh i think most people would lose their shit so i don't know how you yanks fucking do this thing <laughs> or other people People like cut them up throughout the uh, throughout the whole year. Take two days off here, take two days off there. Take th- yeah. I'm I'm more of that guy because I don't really. I used to ski or whatever, but not my thing anymore. So I don't do uh, winter vacations. I just do summer vacations, and you you can balance it out really, really, really well. But what mm. doesn't make sense to me, like that, that they don't let you, like even from the perspective of like from like a businessman's perspective, it's it's extremely productive to give your employees some yeah. time off because they come back super refreshed. It massively lowers like this is official statistics. It massively lowers the chance of them uh, of them quitting i think there was research uh, correct me if i'm wrong but uh they they would, would take the same employee who was considering to uh to quit uh in the next six months same c- category of employee and to half they they gave uh, a week and a half off to the other half they didn't uh, the ones who they didn't they actually quit even earlier than the six month plan the others ended up staying in the company for at least a year it's uh, people just need a fucking refresher they need to be alone with their own fucking Fucking thoughts for a while, yeah. not just heads in the Excel sheet or in the or in the car they're fixing or on the construction site or uh, as uh, Hakim is like up some guy's asshole. So you know <laughs> you, you need you need a moment you need a moment for yourself. And even even in a, a capitalist society, I think could potentially accommodate that. But I'm gonna say a cliche probably for most of our like theory informed friends here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but you need constant economic growth. You need mm. A constant chasing of uh, increased rate of profit, and in order, and if you do not have any technological advancement or improvement of said product that you are offering, the only way for you to increase said profitability is to work your employees harder and harder and harder, and therefore uh, that that directly leads to giving them less days off and less time off it's it's like even even the, the main thing they're selling it for is a snake that eats its own ass the main thing that, that they're selling it for 
uh, selling capitalism to us, you know, the eff efficacy of it uh, doesn't uh, doesn't even work when it comes to a thousand things. But I guess today, relevant to the topic, even when it comes to how you balance out your year between uh, working and not working. And many times uh, people are brainwashed by the idea that, you know, socialism is like uh, a labor obsessed place where like work mm. is absolutely everything and existence is work. But it is 100% literally impossible, at least to me, to imagine a more work-obsessed system than uh, than the modern iteration of capitalism, where the majority of your day, the majority of your uh, mental energy, the majority of your physical energy, the majority of of your passion, of absolutely everything, just goes into, into the fucking job. And now they're not even letting you go swim in a fucking lake for three, four days a fucking year. I mean... If this yeah. works for you, you're a fucking monkey. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, it's tough here in the States because a lot of times companies will give you unpaid time off, um, you know, two weeks of unpaid time off. And that's difficult for people because on paper it's like, yeah, you, you can have vacation. Oh, look, we're so, we're so generous giving you vacation time. But the average American cannot afford a surprise $400 expense. So if you are not always working and always bringing in that money. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, you can't afford to take that time off, which means basically Americans just don't take vacations like they used to, which uh, like you Gopnik, you were saying, it just it's, it wears on your mental state and it makes you a less efficient worker. Capitalists really are shooting themselves in the foot in that regard. Um, but they're also creating a, a tremendously burned out, depressed workforce that also doesn't really have the money to purchase a lot of the products that keep the consumption machine running. So it's it's a it's a downward spiral, and they're kind of unwilling to address the the material concerns of their workers that would make this problem go away at least to an extent and keep their machine running. Um, but that's that's not how the system operates. They need to operate on on razor thin margins. They need to be trimming the fat in every possible way, uh, and that's going to end up biting them in the ass in the long run. Beautifully put. And they don't like, and it's not as if they don't address it at all. Uh, people work more, people have less money, et cetera, et cetera. So we can address it by either paying them more money or giving them more free time or in the best case uh, scenario, give them both things. As we mm. have currently established, you cannot do either of those. So instead, you give them concepts like, uh, you know, you're middle class, even though you literally own nothing, yeah. you are like so deep in fucking loans in order for you to have what mm. you define as the middle class uh, house or, or car or fucking, I don't know, motherfuckers ride $10,000 bicycles now or some shit. You have the newest phone you have the newest uh, computer your gaming fucking levels are through the fucking charts etc etc they, they do address it but they address it by telling you no no man you're at, you're actually pretty fucking good yeah look right. at how bad the other motherfucker has and but uh, as it goes on that sort of uh, strategy is uh, losing pace because nobody's blind and we we are so far deep into debt that uh, that even the debt economy is becoming uh, unsustainable uh, for many reasons. But one of them is that also like extremely poor people are have also started. Uh, they, they've also started pitching that to them. And so they've they're also started getting into debt and uh, buying shit that was previously only quote affordable for the for the middle class. So now the middle the so called middle class is starting to say, man, like even the Joe over there back from high school that you know got fucking D's all the time is living uh, a pretty uh, D's, you say? yeah D, <laughs> similar lifestyle as me he must be in debt that motherfucker you know there's no way he can afford this he's racking up fucking credit cards through the through the roof but then you remember no i am doing that as well so am i really like D's from uh, from high school yes my friend you absolutely are you're all getting fucked the only mm. uh, fucking chad over there or who fucking uh, is all of you guys' boss in his 17th uh, McDonald's franchise in your bum hole of a city is making some buck and he bought his fucking house with cash. All the rest of you are fucking LARPers at being potentially wealthy. But yeah. uh, that like, but that strategy eventually eventually, sorry but eats its own ass as well. It just takes <laughs> a very, very, very long time. And it's not one that's only, like everything is based in material reality, but 
it can be something that is like right in front of your face for like half of your life, if not your entire life, and you will just not uh, not comprehend it. There's, that's where class consciousness fucking uh, fucking comes from. That's why it's so mm. fucking important because it's arguably the only tool when you can use that you can use to fight brain dead idiocy. I don't have any other word uh, that I could use to call people with such decrepitly shitty fucking material existences that are still uh, LARPers at capitalism. Mm. So, you know, shows like this contribute, I hope, in between yeah. when we talk about Black Santas, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of class consciousness and what it accomplishes, let's talk about perhaps the most important thing um, that we've gotten here in the United States. The eight-hour workday, this, this something that most people take for granted today is the fact that a reasonable shift at work is considered to be no longer than eight hours. You know, that's not to say mm. that people don't work longer days sometimes, uh, especially well, in fields like medicine, as, as uh, Hakeem knows. <laughs> but <laughs> rip. I'm very tired. You're both dying. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. But, yeah, for once, I'm not, alhamdulillah. But yes, go good, on. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> anyway, but, you know, 10-hour, 12-hour, or even longer days are no longer considered normal or acceptable in most fields. Um, the fight for an eight-hour day wasn't like a, a pitched battle that ended, you know, in a five-year period. It was a long slog. It started with workers um, simply trying to secure the 10-hour day. And this was back in the early 1800s when adults and children routinely pulled 12 or 14 hour days in just unspeakable conditions. Uh, we're talking mm, back when they back when they pulled themselves up by their work, by, by their bootstraps. <laughs> yeah, okay, if, unlike, if they yeah. even had friggin boots in their in their coal mines mm. and just breathing the, the worst stuff in the mat imaginable. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking early New York, Boston, uh, other cities that were just starting to properly industrialize. So you had people moving into the cities en masse and creating very cramped. Uh, disease-ridden living conditions, and the work conditions weren't really any better. People routinely died on the job, including children. Like, a lot of kids had really, really dangerous jobs, um, crawling into machinery and stuff like that. They'd lose limbs. They'd get crushed. Uh, it was horrific. But workers in Boston eventually got fed up with the inhumane status quo. They started developing class consciousness. They realized, hey, this is bullshit. The guy above us is living in the lap of luxury, and we're down in these mines dying, literally dying for him, uh, and he's, he's giving us scraps. So in 1825, they organized a strike movement that gradually spread throughout the northeast of the country. Over the next 25 years or so, a number of states gave in and conceded to a 10-hour workday, though it often wasn't enforced. Uh, then in 1864, the International Workingmen's Association, which included a particular drunken German philosopher, announced that an eight-hour workday was, quote, the first step in the emancipation of the working class. Uh, the process of winning this shorter day took literally decades. Uh, it included major strikes from across the labor landscape, from Chinese immigrant railroad workers to New York City tradesmen. And in 1886, we saw the first May Day Parade in Chicago with workers marching and chanting, we're summoning our forces from shipyard, shop, and mill, eight hours for work, eight hours for rest, eight hours for what we will. You've probably uh, seen that graphic floating around online before. Uh, a few days later, there was an incident that which, uh, which we alluded to earlier involving a bomb, which was blamed on local anarchists in what became known as the Haymarket Affair, which put the brakes on the eight-hour movement for a while. A few more decades passed with significant strikes to mark the way. He had the Carpenters Union in 1890, he had the United Mine Workers in 1902, and finally the cause became part of Teddy Roosevelt's presidential platform, so it finally got some kind of federal recognition. But still, it wasn't until 1938 that the U.S. got the Fair Labor Standards Act, which banned child labor, hooray, established a five-hour or a five-day work week, a 44-hour work week, and introduced a federal minimum wage. And then finally in 1940, like a century later, the Fair Labor Standards Act was revised to adjust the work week to 40 hours. So we only have time off today thanks to over a century of tireless, thankless mm -hmm. struggle by our fellow workers who developed class consciousness, many of whom were fired, beaten by the police, imprisoned, or even killed for their trouble. Mm -hmm. This is the difference um, in perspective between back then and today, I think. Like today, we we don't have this this mass class consciousness we don't even have a, a, a little bit of it we think oh what, what can i do as a single worker and that's or we're just, good man this is so good look at these guys they <laughs> yeah, had a 10-hour work more depressing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 
Yeah, it's very, very frustrating because back back in the day, you'd have, you know, yo, boss, me and the boys were thinking uh, <laughs> we're going to burn the factory down if you don't give us the day off. It's like that's that's the, uh, that's the rhetoric that you need to have. We mm-hmm. need to have militant yeah. labor again. Mm-hmm. We need to be, you know, to make the bosses aware that their factories, their farms, their hotels, these things only run by the grace of the labor of the people who work those jobs. It's like capitalists don't produce value. It's the workers that produce value. And and if we don't remember that, we are never going to make any progress. So we need to look back, realize that these were long processes, but that we can and need to develop class consciousness to win these battles in uh, for the benefit of labor at the expense of the capitalist class. This We really need to look to history to understand what exactly we can accomplish because we've done it before and we can do it again. Beautifully put. Yeah, I- yeah, no, exactly right. But the thing is that, and this is the, the, the annoying thing, a lot of the time you'll hear, uh, particularly when uh, you see the, the pundits speak, right? The, mm. the, sh- the, sh- the shapipis and, and the shaboo-boos, <laughs> right? <laughs> when they'll talk about this stuff, it's like, oh yeah, but capitalism's lifted so many people out of poverty. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have, uh, thanks to capitalism, you know, you have all this time off and you have uh, healthcare and you have this and that. And, and basically they, they, they take every good that... Uh, labor agitation has brought humanity mm. and then tried to twist it basically as, oh no, this is just the uh, how benevolent the system is that it will bestow upon you these um, all, all these great things. Uh, and a good thing to keep in mind about all this is number one, they're full of shit and you know they're full of shit, but number two, at the end of the day, even these sort of things can be considered to be concessions. Yeah, Fa- they're fairly well entrenched. Yes, that's true. We're not most likely we're not going to see somebody abolishing the weekend <laughs> anytime <laughs> soon, right? But yeah, you know. you have to remember that at some point it was very normal for you to work sixteen hour days, fourteen hour days, your kids to work, and for you to have basically no time off. Yeah, uh, including weekends. So it's not you shouldn't be. Um, you can't it's take a, it for it's granted. It's a cycle of con- yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. and it's a cycle of continuous agitation for f- further and further uh, concessions. And by the way, uh, it's been like almost a hundred years now since we settled on an eight-hour workday and having the weekend off and whatnot, uh, the five hours that we, uh, the the five days that we work in the week, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now it's a step for to go even further because our pri- uh, productivity as individual workers has skyrocketed beyond imagination. Mm-hmm. At this point, we should be working 25, 30 hour uh, weeks, if even, it, it, if most even likely that. less. Mm-hmm. In part, yeah, if, if even that. So um, educate, agitate, organize. Um, the more we fight for a better future, the more likely we're actually going to win it mm. um, and not to get complacent because complacency is the first step to uh, having all the stuff be taken away. Exactly. Anyways, yeah, that, was, that was just my point. Very well said. Yeah, it's something that we we think this is just how it is or how it's always been. And that's not the case, nor will it always be the case. We we have a lot of us here in the Imperial Corps have this the still this end of history mentality where it's like, all right, we've reached the pinnacle. All we can do now is kind of polish things up a little bit, make it uh, look a little nicer. Maybe eh, maybe we can help out the homeless people a little bit through various charities. But, you know, we're not pushing for anything more because, you know, we've got everything we need. Everything's all right. We're all we're all good here. And that's it's not a mm-hmm. good mindset to have. You shouldn't be content with the scraps that we've been tossed. Yeah, and, and mm. here where Hakim and me, for example, could come into into discussion, that into discussion as a, as a comment to this sort of rhetoric is, you know, usually they come to you, uh, especially in the, in the developed West, and they tell you, okay, it's easy for you to complain, but what we have here is uh, so much better than what a lot of people in the developing world would kill for, and uh, they use that as an argument for you not to strive towards betterment, Mm -hmm. and I think uh, I can speak for him here, uh, both of us being from uh, what, you know, typical Westerner would define as a shithole country. No, guys, (laughs) absolutely work to better your own uh, direct conditions, as long as they obviously do not, in fact, to the developing world uh, because that that otherwise you will become even more complacent than than you are now that that argument somehow implies that uh, you know if uh, I don't know my my neighbor's cow is dying that means they shouldn't uh, 
uh, I shouldn't breed my own cow to have two potentially, and then yeah. give the second one even to to my neighbor after the cow died. It's it's it's, it's a lose lose no matter no matter what you do. Uh, but it's being sold like uh, that's what pisses me off. Uh, complacency is being sold as a, as a sort of virtue of modesty, of being like you know be grateful to the Lord for what uh, He has given you and. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't ask for more because even like usually people you know go with the fucking oh we are living in the best best times in history you know what it was like to live during the fucking black plague or something bro right. and they think it's such a deep fucking comment and yes I am very mm -hmm. fucking grateful to to everything to everyone that has given me the life that I live right now I'm very fucking grateful that I've been born now but mm -hmm. we have no idea what awaits us in two hundred three hundred seven hundred two thousand uh, two thousand years but I can answer you know what awaits us stagnation and potential degradation if we do not do our purpose in this generation to keep pushing the the human experiment uh, forward like if every single but like when we first invented i don't know f when the first motherfucker washed his hands and was like oh my god no no more fucking bacteria when i operate on a on a patient then we should all be like oh okay we reached peak fucking medicine uh, we would still be stuck at the moment where i don't know we're giving coke to motherfuckers to not feel as bad it's uh the, the fact that we have it okay and the fact that we should be grateful for what we have currently is an argument that should fall on dead ears because it it uh, it, it inspires uh, laziness to put it uh, as simply as possible you said something that that stood out to me where you said how complacency is is seen as a virtue and I think that's that's a critical part to understanding. Uh, mm. labor relations today like the the capitalist class sells it to us you know when we try to press for for better conditions they sell it to us as us being greedy which i think is 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 so funny because you know if you if you take the the rail strike for example it wasn't just about sick days but let's take sick days for example they're asking for sick days and that makes them greedy and ungrateful for the things that they already have when the people who you know in congress voted down this proposal or you know voted to end the strike or whatever all have unlimited paid sick days like the, the people who, mm. at the levers of power their bosses you know the government they have all these benefits that the, the people who work for them are asking for you know fairly politely if all things considered and the 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 ultra wealthy bezos and his buddies are all vastly richer today even than they were at the beginning of the pandemic to the tune of you know trillions mm. of dollars so if we're talking about greed it's it's very funny to me that they are trying to to pin that label on the workers who are just asking for you know a basic decent standard of living when the capitalist class has increased their wealth so tremendously in such a short period of time Absolutely. When 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 you're building a railroad uh, because you want to connect two spots, and there's a massive mountain in, in front of you, uh, you start talking to it because you don't want to you know do any any damage to it. And what the working class has been doing for the last hundred, like at least not hundred, but at least forty years, uh, has been constantly talking to that mountain. The mountain being uh, the capitalists and constantly engaging in debate and discussion with them, uh, and constantly you know how we're doing it right now, uh, complaining about how you know their arguments make no sense, how hypocritical they are, how this, how that. Uh, which uh, okay kudos to us for the patience I guess or the liberal moral compass that we all have fucking inherited in the last uh, three four decades uh, on one from one perspective and from another perspective it's just a, a time bomb that is that is eventually ticking when we will realize that uh, the, the, this wall or this mountain or whatever the fuck that we've been talking to is only echoing back and not doing anything at all and it's going to lead to a moment where said uh, mountain will need to have a massive fucking crack in the middle of it because the working class wants to progress to something uh to something greater um so the, their hypocrisy 
is is a part of who they are and half of them absolutely know that they engage in said hypocrisy it yeah. is it is our complacency again for the lack of a better word uh that we are we are okay with you know sitting and negotiating with these fucks at one point uh -huh. negotiation goes off the table i mean at, not only at one point but w when negotiation gets off the table that is when real change is actually instilled and uh and uh, created, but uh, th I think every generation has this problem. Now I'm being overly critical of ours, but <laughs> but everybody tries to go through the smooth path, through the nice yeah. path, through the as f peaceful as possible. But ev but e eventually those uh, the, you know time runs out, and when it comes to our generation in particular, our time is literally running out because we're fucking burning down our whole fucking planet. So yeah. uh, if other motherfuckers before us realized on time that talking with these motherfuckers leads to absolutely nothing, and how do I say this without getting arrested, did something about it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and the planet wasn't dying around them, at least they didn't know that it was dying around yeah. them, and we know our planet is dying around them, and still we're sitting at the table negotiating with these fucks for like fucking, what, a sick days? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are the ones who are being the idiots, and uh, you know, kudos to the enemy, I guess, because they're fucking us up the ass, and it seems like we're fucking liking it. All right. And that's not to blame the workers too much. Like we, we, it's it's been a constant propaganda machine. They've got incredibly oh, successful. Course. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, to the liberal in the walls, we're not blaming us. We're not blaming the people who who work day in and day out. But that being said, other people with fewer resources at their disposal to learn these things figured it out. We need to figure it out too. Yes, no, we, we we do have excuses, absolutely great, and they're decent excuses, and you know, always material analysis, oh, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. it's understandable, blah, 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 but at one moment, all that got the window, it, it's, yeah. no excuse will be acceptable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because what 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 excuse do you have? Oh my God, a car was driving towards me and I didn't leap out of the way. Oh, I was tired. Oh, I was <laughs> fucked up. Oh, I was depressed, etc. Et yes, all all real things, fact. But then you died. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you yeah, died. Die. Yeah. <laughs> I love the I love the abrupt end after the <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the crescendo of the you know, what happens you die. And I just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. The LDR move out of the Would fucking way of the car, or actually sabotage yeah, the car exactly. so it doesn't fucking drive, if you know <laughs> what I mean. Hello, listener. Editor JT here. The following two-ish minutes were entirely too spicy to leave unbleeped, so here, please enjoy this brief interlude of Austin native band Goat and Your Mom. Now back to the show. All right, we had a brief detour there that I <laughs> ho ho ho. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see what JT will solve it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what I do with that. Um, anyway, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this this episode. I think it was fun. Uh, I think we had some good Santa memes. Uh, mm -hmm. We've concluded that Santa can be black. Um, probably mm -hmm. Samoan, I think, as well, uh, mm -hmm. is acceptable. Um, but we'll yes. leave that up to you guys. You tell us what you think. I the, would love a Maori Santa, Maori Santa that, you know, does the traditional <laughs> dance. Fucking epic. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all that good stuff. Can't wait to see you guys yes. all in 2023 and see what uh, fresh horrors <laughs> await us in old. the new year. So <laughs> <laughs> Man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. All right, sweet. Beyond my comprehension. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been the Deep Program. I'm JT. I'm Hakeem. And I'm Yugopnik. And I'm Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs>